How to create a RAG or a knowledge base on AWS? Let's explore Bedrock. In this video, we'll do a small exploration of the AWS Bedrock knowledge base service. We'll create a RAG, we'll create a knowledge base by scraping a website. We will create a vector database to support that. And then we'll test it to see uh, that it actually uses this database and answers correctly, right, with our own data. Now, to understand just a little bit what's a RAG, so basically a RAG is a way for you to provide more context to your uh, language model without having to fine tune it. So along the way, you created a lot of data, a lot of organizational data that you have, whether it's in Confluence, maybe on S3, maybe it's on uh, relational databases, you accumulated a lot of data that you may want to use. So you can use it uh, for chatbots, for example, if you're creating a support chatbot for your website, you use RAGs uh, to actually hold that information and then provide more context to your visitors. Uh, you can do that. You can create a RAG for uh, allowing your analysts to actually interact with the with AI chats and do some analyzing on your data and come up with new trends or new things that you want to implement. So RAGs are very powerful and cheaper and easier than fine tuning your the models, right? You don't need a GPU or anything like it. In a lot of use cases, that actually makes sense. And there's a way to do that in AWS Bedrock. Uh, the service is new to me, and I'm exploring it right now with you. So this is going to be a fairly short video. Uh, the next one will actually put this to more use, but more about it later. Actually, this video is a little different from the rest of the content that I have so far. AWS Bedrock is a service that I'm not that familiar with and I'm trying to learn. So for me, this is a great way to actually learn new, uh, new services that are related to AI and gain more experience with it. And so maybe these are not super polished, but if you're just starting out with these services, I think it's going to be interesting to actually watch and follow this series where I explore these AWS services under Bedrock. So this video is of course going to be a little shorter, but let me know what you think. Let me know if you actually like this type of video, uh, comment below and let me know. Okay, so back to the video. Let's create our first uh, knowledge base. So to do that, I, I went to the Amazon Bedrock knowledge bases and you can see that it is empty here. Uh, I did run it once before, I did create a knowledge base once before, so maybe you will see something a little different in the later stage. I'll explain in a minute. Okay, so we have a few options as to what to do here. Uh, we can create a rag for uh, unstructured data. So this is a knowledge base with a vector store. This is, for most use cases, this is what you want to use or the more basic one. There's one for Kendra Gen AI Index. If you're using Kendra, that's a good option. If you're more enterprise and you have a lot of data sources after that, maybe that's a good option. Uh, and then, of course, there's structured data sources, your relational databases that you may want to connect to and actually see. But in this example, I'll choose the, uh, the base one. This will be the... Um, cookie cutter use case for creating a knowledge base. And by the way, so when I first set this up for the first time, I really used uh, Amazon Q, which surprised me. It's getting better and giving uh, more information. So I highly recommend consulting with Amazon Q. Back to creating it, I'll create a knowledge base with a vector store. So let's see what our options. Uh, the, the knowledge base name, I'll leave it like that, the, the random thing. It will create a new uh, service role. Uh, this service role will, role will have to have access to the actual models. You can use different types of data sources. Okay, so you have S3, which is not what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I'm going to use the web crawler preview. And you can have others like connected to your Confluence, to your Salesforce, or create a custom one. I'm just going to do a web crawl to one of our uh, websites, which is fine. Logs right now. 
Okay, and that's simple. That and the next step is to actually provide the data source. In our case, crawling is really easy. So I'll do a, I'll do this. WPCallTracker.com. That's a website that we have, and we want to crawl. It has a database of stuff. And then sync options. We'll do the default one. And for now, that's it. I don't want to. I just want to see the knowledge base working. So I'll click next. Now we have a few things here. Um, we have the embedding model that you need to choose. So this is the model that will be uh, used when fetching the data from your data source. It will basically fetch it, fetch it, and make it uh, and turn it into a to a vector, whatever it does to make it available for the language models uh, to create the actual embedding. So that's uh, what I'm going to use. Now, you may need at this point, I don't remember, uh, I think I had to use, uh, to go to model access and request access to this model, to the Titan. I'm not sure if it's on this step or another. So for the first time you're using a model, you have to actually enable it, which is a bit weird. I think they're going to, they're about to change it any day now. I think this month this will go away. Okay, and then we need to create a vector store. I'm going to create a new one and you have a few options, a um, few simple ones. I'm going to use Amazon Open Search Serverless for this. It will create a, the service and everything around it. You can also use Neptune and I don't need redundancy, not for this little demo. Next, and let's create the knowledge base. Let's see how it goes. Note that in the background, it also creates the actual vector database, so that may take a little long, longer. Okay, so it looks like it finished, and now we need to sync the data source. Otherwise, we won't fetch the data. So let's do a sync. And now it will go and crawl the website and get the information back into the, uh, to in this case, open search the vector database. Seems like the sync is complete. So let's verify that. Okay, it's complete with some warnings. Let's see what, skip document, the URL. And there's a problem with the URL that I gave it. Let's try again. So I found the problem. I know this will actually, let's stop the sync. I know what the problem is. This is going to fail. So I stopped this, oh, sorry. Let's do stop sync. Add this, and this is the problem, right? Uh, there's a redirect there. So now we're waiting. It we were w now we're waiting for it to actually stop the sync, so we can start syncing again. And now that it's stopped, let me sync again. And hopefully this time it will actually work, and we'll see. Uh, the source file metadata files will start seeing things happening and more URLs being added to this knowledge base. The problem is it takes a long time, the scroll feature. I'm guessing we're going into some queue that will start crawling on AWS. Maybe this is a new feature. We can see that this time it's working. We have 84 source files. We have some failed files. Let's see the warnings. I'm not concerned. I'm not really concerned. These are files that it can't actually view. Finally, it's complete. So we can actually go and check out our knowledge base. And now that we have all the information, we can actually test this knowledge base. So we have a few options here. We want to have retrieval and response generation, right? We want to see that it actually uh, created coherent data. I'll use Nova Pro for this demo. This is one of the models that I enabled. So I'm not going to do a lot here. Of course, later you can complement this with guardrails and ensuring that uh, you're not leaking data or adhering, you're adhering to certain internal rules that you want to create. So that's very important later on to actually create this guardrails uh, 
But for now, let's just test it. Let's see. So tell me, tell me how to track external link, links. So this is one of the functions, one of the things that that website uh, that that product does. Uh, it has the, all the information in their support page. So let's see what it's saying. So it, you can already see from the context that you have the context for the actual page, right? This is not something that any AI actually indexed before. So we have this. You can see that it also adds links to the actual sources. So this is great, especially if you're working with data that is important for for you to know that is true you can actually click that and your users can actually just go the down the rabbit hole and make sure that everything is actually real uh, so we have that and that is great so we tested it and now technically you can use it but how to actually use it this is going to be the topic of the the next video in the next one what i'm going to try and do is actually create, use the MCP, uh, AWS has certain MCPs, so it has an MCP for uh, the bedrock knowledge base. And we're going to use that to connect to our coding agents, to Cursor maybe, or Claude Code, and we'll connect to different data sources. So don't forget to actually subscribe so you don't miss that next video. It's going to be much more interesting. See you in the next one.